Hello guys, my name is Lee and I'd like to welcome you to this video tutorial. In this video, um, we're going to take a look at materials and material instances. Um, so first of all, let's define what a material is and what a material instance is. So a material is a game asset that's going to allow you to assign textures and values such as the roughness or glossiness of your material to a 3D object, whereas a material instance is going to allow you to make a copy of the original material that you created and only change certain values in which you allow to be changed. And so you can imagine a situation where you have maybe created a wood material and your master material has maybe 200 nodes and it looks really nice. However, you want to be able to change the color to for it to be assigned to um, different assets. And so instead of creating two or three different materials that has hundreds of nodes, you can just create a master material that allows you to change the, the value in which you want. And so this becomes extremely useful um, in terms of uh, production time and in terms of saving memory. So with that being said, um, let's jump in here and get started. First thing you wanna do is to create a material. In order to do that, we can right click within our content browser and choose the option that says material. It's going to ask you for a name. So I'm gonna call this M underscore master material. And then we can double click on our material to open it. Okay, by doing so, we're now going to be presented with something that looks like this. In here is where we're going to be able to set the values of our material. So we can add, um, we can change the roughness and glossiness. We can add textures and so on and so forth. So let's start with something very simple. And what we're going to do is to ch be able to change the color of our material. In order to do so, we need to bring in what's known as a constant three vector. So there are a few different ways in which we can create um, vectors, constant three vectors. The first and easiest one is to press and hold the number three key and then left click. This will create a parameter for us called, um, called a constant um, vector or constant three vectors we can see right here. Now under the parameters here, we can change the color. So we can click the color swatch and change the color to anything we like. So I'm going to choose red. If we like, we can specify a, a specific value by either plugging in the values here into the R, G, and B. So I just want this to be red. So I'm going to make sure that the R is set to one, one, and the G and B is set to zero and zero. And so this will give me a solid red color. Now we can see inside the material preview that it's still black. And the reason for that is this has not actually been hooked up to the actual material. In order to do so, we need to left click and drag from the execution pin of our node and bring this into the base color. After doing that, we can press the save button and this will save our material. Once the material is saved, let's click and drag and pull this down and let's plug this uh, or click and drag and place this here as a tab. Okay, so now we've created our material. What we can do is we can left click and drag this onto one of our, um, one of our assets here. And what we want to be able to do is to create a material instance so we can change this color. In order to do that, we can right click on the original material and we can choose the option that says create material instance. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to call this blue because this is going to be blue instead. And I'm going to then click and drag this onto our second asset. Now you can see right now it's not blue, it's still red and that's because it's still using the original values in which we've set in the first material. So if we double click on this, okay, we're going to be presented with a few options. So let's talk about some of these options first, then we'll look at how we can change the color. So the first one is this option that says physics material, and we're not really going to discuss this in depth right now, but this essentially allows us to assign a physics material um, within this material that's going to, for example, um, allow us to have certain physical properties to this um, material. So if you have water, for example, and you want it to have uh, certain properties of water, that's how you would do that. Now, the one that's important here is this one that's called parent. So if I click and drag this like so, 
So we can see what's going on here a little easier. We have this option that says parent. And what this is saying is that, hey, this is a reference to the original material. So if you have, if you are opening up Unreal and you just want to learn and you want to see how those materials are created, if you open up a material like this and click the magnifying button, it's going to highlight and take you to the original material, at which point you can then double click and open that up and see what's going on. So I'm going to click and drag this over here and we can see that this is the original material. Now below that we have um, options for light mask settings and we also have um, material property overrides. We're not really going to talk about those right now. And then we have a, a preview mesh. So if we want to assign a, a mesh in here, we can do that here. Now, what you notice is that we don't actually have the option to change the color. So how do we do that? So what we need to do is we need to go back to our original material. I'm going to expand this to make this larger. And we need to make this into a parameter. Now, there are a few ways in which we can bring in um, parameters. So the first one is if we've already created something, we've already created a node and we decide later that we want to be able to um, change this within a material instance, what we can do is we can right click on this and we can choose this option that says convert to parameter. When we do that, it's going to ask us to give a name. So I'm going to call this um, base color. And by doing that, what we've done is we've given this a name called base color. Right, as you can see here, so it says parameter name and we can assign a group. So I'm going to call this, um, let's see, we're going to assign this under the colors group and press save. Now going back to this material, so going back to our material instance, we can see that we've now created a group name color and there's actually a new value under here that says base color. At the moment, this is grayed out. Okay, so let me just find some real estate space here so we can see it's a little better. And what we can do is we can now enable this option. And if we enable this, we can then select this color, this color swatch, and change the color. So now we can choose maybe a blue color. And so that's the very basics of how we would change the color here. So I'm going to jump back over to our material. And I just want to show you a few different ways in which we can bring in a node like this. So one way, as I said, is, is we can right click and convert it to a parameter. If we want, we can right click here and we can actually search for this. So we can type in vector and you can see we have this option that says vector parameter. And so this is a, another way. So for example, we'll call this color B and we can do it like that. Okay, so we can essentially create these in different ways. It really just depends on you. Um, so we have our color and we can now change the, the color of this inside our um, material instance. So how can we control how much metallic and how much roughness there is? So again, um, if we want to control the value here, we can have what's known as a, a constant one. So if I press and hold the one key and left click, we can create the constant one and we can right click here and, and convert this to a parameter again. And we can call this whatever we like. Let's call underscore a just for an example. Another way in which we can create this type of um, value is we can press and hold the S key and left click. And this will again, create exactly the same thing. That's value B. And uh, the final way in which we can create a scalar parameter is if we know that we only want to extract the metallic or the roughness directly from this node, we can right click on here and choose promote to uh, variable and we can do that. And the nice thing about this is it will inherit the name for us, so metallic. Now, before we go any further, I wanna show you something. We actually do have what's known as a constant two. So if I left click, uh, sorry, if I hold the uh, number two key and click, we create a constant two vector. Now, what I, the reason I'm showing you this is if you're thinking, oh, I can now have two values in which I can independently control once that's into a parameter, that's not true. If we were to right click and convert this to a parameter, what this is going to do is gonna convert this into a constant three, okay? And uh, the reason for that is you cannot hold um, two values 
in, in Unreal in this particular way. It has to have uh, three values, a RGB or an XYZ value. Okay, so um, we can't do that. If we want to create a, uh, 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 so if we want to create a way in which we can control two independent values, we have to create two constant one vectors and then blend them or control them in some different way. Okay, so we have the metallic and I'm going to right click here and promote the roughness and we're going to give this some default value so I'm going to give this a default value of 1 and the roughness value a default value of 0 so let's see it's got 1 and this one's got 0 okay now you can see that um, it doesn't look as if anything's changed here the reason for that is I don't have the live mode enabled okay so if I turn on the live mode we'll get a better preview so there we see, I've enabled the option, I can see what's going on here. So now if I, if I, first of all, let's select this and let's give this a group. I'm going to call this um, values, just like this. And then if I select the roughness, because I've already just created that group, I can click the drop down and choose values and press save. Now, when I go back over to the material instance over here, you can see that now I have these two extra values that are listed under value. I can control the metallic and the roughness. You see here by changing these values, I'm going to get a different appearance. So now we get something that looks like this just by changing these values. Now, if we ever decide that we want to go back to the original value instead of um, instead of the one that we've created, instead of going over here and looking, what we can do is we can click the arrow, that little yellow arrow here, and this will change the value for us. So maybe I want this to be a little less metallic and a little more rough. Okay, so we'll get something that looks like this. Okay, so let's continue. So now imagine we have, we've created a color, we can change the color. We have uh, create some values in which we can change, but for instance, we have a texture. We want to change a texture. So what we can do is we can click and drag a texture in here. And just like before, we can right click on this and choose um, convert to parameter. So we're going to call this normals. Just like so. And I can click and drag this and put this into the normals. And uh, and this will then compile just like this. Okay, let's let's. Okay, that's okay. And we get something that looks like this. And we press save. And then if we go back over to our material instance, we can see that this is now in here. And what we can do because this is now a material instance is we can select and enable the normals. And first of all, let's go back over here. And let's put this under a group called textures just to keep things nice and clean. Let's go back over here. So now you can see we have a group called textures. And what we can do is now we can click and drag a new texture on here. Or we can click the drop down and choose the different texture. And so you see by doing that, we've now got drastically different materials. So over here, we have this very shiny metal like material. And over here, this is, it looks less, less like metal. You know, you can see the normal is, is changing the way the light reacts with that. So we got two vastly different materials just based on those three, um, different types of parameters. Now, what happens if we have something like this, where we have, oops, let me try this again. We have a normal map and we want to be able to enable or disable a value. Okay, so maybe we, we want to enable or disable a normal map or we want to enable or disable a value. Okay, so the, the easiest way in which we can do that is by creating what's known as a switch. So if I click and drag from here, 
and I let go, it's going to give me the option to search. I'm going to type in switch. And from here, we can choose this static switch. Sorry, not static switch. Yeah, let's just static switch, and then we can also we can also oh we can't convert sorry so we need to switch and oh here it is so static switch parameter okay we can give this a a name such as has normals question mark and call, put this in the switches and then what we can do is we can bring in maybe a constant three by pressing and holding that three button and giving the B value maybe point oh, the B value maybe point five for example maybe one yeah and then we can plug this in over here and then plug this in over here and so essentially what we've created here is a boolean value that says that this is either true or it's false so if I save this And then I go back over here. You can see that there's actually no normal. So under the um, switches, we can enable this. And if we enable this, you'll see that we actually enable our normal. So let's turn this on. And ah, now you can see that the normal has now become available to us. Okay. And then from here again, we can change the, the texture. Okay. So if we disable this, that value is going to disappear because it's directly co in correlation with this switch. So I'm going to turn this on. Okay. Finally, we're going to, sh I'm going to show you how to um, control between two values based on a, a linear interpolate. So let's bring in, let's, Hold, let's take this, I'm gonna press Control C and then Control V to make a copy. And I'm gonna call this color A and this one I'm gonna call color B. And let's choose, so this is red, we're gonna go with the opposite here. And we're gonna bring in a LERP. So I'm gonna press and hold the L key. This will bring in a linear interpolate. And I'm gonna put this in color A and this one in color B. And then in the alpha, I can right click and I can choose promote to variable and call this alpha. And then I wanna plug this in over here. So I can right click on here and choose uh, connect to base color and this will make an override. And look at this. So if I, this is set to zero, so it's set to red. If I set this to one, it will then become this a blue color. And if I set this to like, 0.5 it's going to make a mix between those two colors okay so i'm going to keep this at default value of 0.5 press save and i'm going to then close this because we're essentially done with this for now i'm going to open up this material and you can see that scale parameter value i didn't give this a group but that's okay and if I start to change this value, you can see that we're now transitioning between um, the different colors here. Okay, so we start off here, and it's gonna go all the way to this uh, green color. Now it's going a little bit over because we're going over the one. Okay, so zero here and one here. And if we go to two or three, it's gonna increase that value. This is we can control that later also by using different um, values but that's essentially how we can control between two values based on an alpha okay so those are the different methodologies in which we can use to control a material instance if you like this video please feel free to subscribe and drop a comment down below and until next time thank you for watching and bye bye